let's play a, a, an Irish comic song from the music hall. And this one, and like a lot of Irish comic songs, it's actually American. There was a great vogue for these back in the, the late 1800s. You know, and uh, it's a kind of, it's a stereotype. It's like Will Fife and I belong to Glasgow um, doing this. Um, I'll, I'll tell you about Will, I don't know if I mentioned this, by the way, that Will Fife was such a famous singer, was the guy that did Two of Them and Tamra Bottle, that the, the Glasgow Empire Music Hall actually ran a Will Fife lookalike contest. And he entered it himself. <laughs> he dressed as himself in his costume and he entered it. And he came in second. <laughs> <laughs> so, but anyway, um, he, he portrayed a kind of stereotype of the stage Scotsman, along with people like Harry Lauder. You know, he, he wore a kind of burlesque of a Scottish outfit, a kilt. Usually the kilts, kilts come to here, his kilt would be down to here. And the wee harp with a pom-pom and a stick, you know. And, and he would, you know, he'd play this kind of you know, burlesque Scotsman. And, and these Irish comic songs portrayed was a stereotype Irishman, kind of. They drank a lot, they got in awful trouble, they, they messed things up, Keystone Cops kind of thing was the, the running theme through them. So this is one written by a man called C. Frank Horn in 1883, and it's called Miss Fogarty's Christmas Cake. And it has a chorus, I'm going to, actually before that, he wrote a sequel, it was very popular, and it made it to Scotland. You could buy the sheet music from a company in Dundee, and it said at the bottom, as sung by the Irish Daisy. I don't know who that was, but anyway, famous enough to get on the get on the news on the newsletter. So um, he wrote this. Um, he, he also wrote a sequel called Miss Hooligan's Homemade Pie, which didn't do nearly as well. So it has a chorus which I'll teach you. Okay, you ready? You ready? Yeah. yeah. Right. There were plums and prunes and cherries, citron and raisins and cinnamon too. There were nuts and cloves and berries, and a top that was nailed on with glue. I'm halfway there, by the way. <laughs> there were caraway seeds in abundance that would work up a fine stomach ache that would kill a man twice after eating a slice of Miss Fogarty's Christmas cake. <laughs> okay? <laughs> right, okay. I think if you get as far as Christmas cake, I'll be very pleased. <laughs> As I sat in my window last evening, a letterman brought it to me. A little girl Ted's invitation, saying, Gil Hooley, come over to tea. I knew that the Fogarty sent it, so I went for old friendship's sake. The first thing that they gave me to try was a slice of a Christmas cake. There were plums and prunes and cherries, citron and raisins and cinnamon too. There was nuts and cloves and berries, and a top that was nailed on with glue. There were caraway seeds in abundance to work up a fine stomach ache. They would kill a man twice over eating a slice of his Fogarty's Christmas cake. Where were you? <laughs> Miss Mulligan wanted to try it, but sure it wasn't no use. Though she worked on it over an hour, she couldn't get none of it loose. Till Kelly came in with a hatchet and Murphy came in with a saw. That cake was enough by the powers above to paralyze any man's jaw. There were plums and prunes and cherries, citron and raisins and cinnamon too. There was nuts and cloves and berries, and a top that was nailed on with glue. There were caraway seeds in abundance to work up a fine stomach cake. There was kill a man twice after eating a slice of Miss Poverty's Christmas cake. <laughs> Miss Fogarty, proud as a peacock, sat smiling and primping away. So she tripped over Flanagan's brogans and she spilled some home brew in her tea. Gil Hooley, she said, you're not eating a, a little bit more for me sake. Oh no, Miss Fogarty, said I, if I had it, my stomach would break. There were plums and prunes and cherries, citron and raisins and cinnamon too. There was nuts and cloves and berries, and a top that was nailed on with glue. There were caraway seeds in abundance to work up a fine stomach ache. They would kill a man twice after eating a slice of Miss Fogarty's Christmas cake. O'Grady was sick with a colic. O'Donnell got pain in his head. 
And Murphy lay down on the sofa and he swore that he wished he was dead. Miss Bailey went into hysterics and there she did shiver and shake. And everyone swore they were poisoned by eating that Christmas cake. There were plums and prunes and cherries, citron and raisins and cinnamon too. There was nuts and cloves and berries, and a top that was nailed on with glue. There were caraway seeds in abundance to work up a fine stomach ache. They would kill a man twice after eating a slice of Miss Fogarty's Christmas cake.